Hello my viewers and my subscribers. I just want to thank you so much for tuning in today to another video brought by me. Um, the title of this video is Six Main Reasons Why Some New Dialysis Technicians Quit. Alright, now if you are someone that is watching this video that is interested in becoming a dialysis technician or you are currently in school to become a dialysis technician, this is not to discourage you at all. All right, so don't be like, oh my goodness, what am I getting into? It is really, I really loved being a technician. All right, before I got injured, I loved it. All right, so I'm going to go down the six main reasons and just look at these reasons as advice. Okay, because I want you to, I want you to take these tips in case you run into some of these issues that I'm going to be exploring and explaining. Okay, I'm not saying that you're going to, that this is going to happen to you, but it's better that you get an idea about a couple of things than if you run into it and then you don't know what to do or you're like, uh, I don't want this job anymore. All right, so I'm trying to um, give you some tips on how to stay the course as a new dialysis technician and not quit, okay? Um, number one reason is improper training slash, slash preceptor. Correct training is extremely important. Learning how to do things the right way and correct way the first time the first few months is very very important okay like I said in my previous videos if you have if you do not know what a preceptor is is a preceptor um, could be a tech like me or someone that's more experienced that your manager will pair you up with so that that preceptor can show you the ropes and show you supposed to show you the clinical mandates and the policy and the procedure of doing things and setting up the machine and handling patients so that that is what a preceptor is it could be a nurse if if a nurse is coming into the unit a nurse supposed to shadow an experienced nurse a new technician is supposed to shadow an experienced technician so that's how it works all right so when when someone is being trained um, shortcuts is not really good to um, to you know uh, learn a whole bunch of shortcuts um, in the first few months it is very important to learn the clinical policies and the procedures because if the State Department was to come in your unit and watch you, what, I mean, like, would they see you making a whole lot of bad mistakes? Or would they see you um, putting in the work in terms of doing things by the policy? A lot of texts... Um, get frustrated if they do not if they are not trained right because the patients will know if you're not trained right <clears throat> I'm sorry the patients will know they be like wait a minute you just got hired here and you don't know how to do X Y and Z or wait a minute I don't want you sticking me you know some patients are like that so my tip is if you are not learning like you should you should talk to your manager about shadowing a couple of other people now no everybody has their own style but it's very good for you to observe and look look at how those techs are setting up their station look at how their um oh my goodness my thing just clicked off look at how they are communicating with their patients how they're updating Thank you guys for that interruption um, look at how the tech is updating their patient's chart. If you see a technician that is getting like so much, so many praises from their patient, even their teammates love them, they're doing things right, that is someone you need to really observe because that is how I, be, I, I started improving because I saw a particular guy who would always come to my unit 
and the patients just adored him. They loved him. They were even, they wanted him over me. They said, I want him. I want him. They were like, hey, man, come over here. Put me on, man. I would be like, oh, my goodness. Now, I wasn't jealous, but I was curious. Like, how come this tech, what about this tech, you know, is, is, is making these people go crazy? And he took me under his wing. He showed me what he was doing. Patient first, computer last okay and so that's another video but bottom line is if you see a tech that is on the ball with their patients that is someone you need to be looking at someone you need to really be um, shadowing also ask to watch policy and procedure videos um, from your company you know to better help you learn about the policies and the procedures and the mandates and all of that stuff DVDs are helpful. I have watched them. Okay. On my break time, I would go into a separate room in the unit and I would have to watch those DVDs. Um, number two, getting their own assignment too soon and are sometimes alone when handling patients. I have received emails from individuals who say that they have received three to four and sometimes five patients alone and they have not even really got the full training but they are putting on and taking off patients and many techs that I have talked to have quit because of that because what happens is there's a shortage of staff the manager needs a new person okay for whatever reason they couldn't get an experienced person um, and so they got this person in and now they really need that person on the floor to really put on and take off patients but honestly that is detrimental that is honestly detrimental when a new technician who has not broken in the unit long enough is taking on three to four to five patients alone in the pod or in your in in a section alone that is really not good honestly I don't feel that that unit really cares about their patient because if they did they would have did things a little differently no shade um all right, yeah, because serious mistakes can happen, right? And the patients will get furious. And, <coughs> sorry guys, the patients can sometimes get furious. Some patients curse curse really bad, you know, to text. I know I got cursed out, but not because of this. All right, so um, these patients deserve quality treatment P these patients deserve someone that knows how to put them on and take them off these patients deserve the unit that they're going to to be on top of their game in terms of making sure that new technicians are trained properly okay because this will make a tech go crazy you know what I'm saying like wait a minute I got three to four to five patients I don't even know what to do I, I don't even I don't have nobody to help me because we're short of staff. So guys, my tip is um, tell the manager that you're still learning. Talk to the manager. Ask the manager to please try to pair you with somebody if, if, if that's going to be the case. Please at least pair me with somebody, okay, because I don't want to be liable if something crazy happens because I'm still new I'm still learning I'm, I'm still trying to break into this unit okay and document at all times document okay um okay I skipped something yeah I remember having to when I had went per diem to a far away unit I remember having to tell a nurse how to put on a catheter patient and I'm a technician and here in New York City technicians are not supposed to touch a catheter patient so I had to explain to her how to put on a catheter patient without even touching the patient because she didn't have a clue and they were sure to staff she was the only nurse on that floor she was pushed out 
so fast on the floor because the unit was short of staff. So if I wasn't there that day, I could only imagine um, what could have happened. Sorry, getting so many distractions. Ay, ay, ay. Next three, limited support from management and peers. Okay, um, sometimes technicians run into issues on the floor. Okay, like I said, dialysis is a three-fold cord. You got the patients, you have the teammates, and you have um, management. All right, so from the patients, the technician may be getting a certain type of backlash. Okay, or some disrespect. Maybe the patient um, doesn't want no one new working on them and they're the only one in that pod or that section and they really need reinforcement from management to help them to resolve the issue regarding the patient not wanting them and 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 things getting out of hand um and sometimes the management does not handle those issues or if the tech say you know what, I'm overwhelmed, I need to shadow somebody, please, the manager will be like, you'll be all right, you'll be okay, give it give it some time, go back on that floor, you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. um, my main tip is, if management does not have your back, period, it's only trouble I see, sorry, no shade. My only advice is to make sure you get certified first, within the time frame that you are at that unit and find another clinic and transfer okay never leave a unit unless you get your foot in the door elsewhere um that's very very important if you're contemplating on leaving a unit please make sure you got your foot in the door somewhere else please that is super important because you don't want to be left hanging and make sure you're certified Please make sure you're certified um, if push comes to shove, if you go through that situation. Um, the fourth reason is dialysis school training versus on the clinic floor training differences. All right. Um, Dialysis schools deal with basic and advanced studies regarding dialysis and sometimes have their students practice on dummy arms and other means. This is different from actually sticking a person and hearing them scream and feel uncomfortable. Dialysis schools can never really prepare a person for turnover. Turnover is when your first, second, and third shift patients are coming off the dialysis machine and you have to clean the machines and set up those machines for the next patients to get on. Everyone has their own turnover style and this is hard to just learn without experiencing it and creating your own way of handling it. Some people can't handle the death rate appropriately and some learn to cope yada 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 bottom line is this guys turn over you can never learn in school <laughs> okay so that's why observation is very important make sure um, once you get in the clinic that and when and once you get your own set of patients that you are doing something on your downtime you are stacking your sections with extracorporeal circuits, which I call lines, your dialyzers, your saline, your saline bags. If you put sheets on the chair, the sheets, your clamps for the saline, make pre and post packs. Be prepared. That's another video. Be prepared. Preparation will help you win during turn over for instance you have four patients on the machine and turnover is about to take place meaning one patient is supposed to come off in your section first however your two patients who are first shift patients are now asking you to come off at the same time get me off get me off this machine what would you do or let's say you have one patient 
out of the four that you have start passing out in the midst of the turnover rush, what do you do? <clears throat> first of all, you always handle emergencies first. Emergencies come before anything. Okay, when a patient is passing out, you follow your clinical policy and procedure. That I can't really get into depth because everybody's clinic is different. Some clinics say you're supposed to, um, when someone passes out, give them saline, take a blood pressure, call the nurse. You know, so there is, that's why I left it as a question mark. You've got to find out what to do. Okay, you've got to find out. Um, if two patients are coming off, you gotta exp you got to talk to your patient and tell your patient, patient such and such, um, you're going to have to wait. You know, it depends on which patient come off. I'm sorry. It depends. It, it really depends on which patient is asking you to come off. Even though there are two patients that may be asking you to get off first, you, you really got to talk to them. You really got to see, you know... Um, do they have a doctor's appointment? You know, why why are they requesting to come off? You know, also, you had to get the nurse involved. Nurse X, Y, and Z, patient such and such wants to come off. You had to document this. But my biggest thing is talk to the patient. Talk to these two patients. Patient such and such, you know that I got to take off this patient and this patient. So you're going to have to give me a minute. You know, and so if you communicate with the patient, they will calm down. They won't get so angry and 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 start getting upset because they're not off the machine. Com communicate with the patient. Tell them, I'm only one person. I can only take one person off at a time. Moving forward. Number five. Severe drama on the floor with dialysis teammates, management, and or patients. All right. Every job has that one person they may not like or who's causing issues for them in one way or another. To be honest with you, I have had several individuals over the years who have made my dialysis experience as a technician a living nightmare and hell. However, I had to really pray to God and ask him for the grace to forgive them talk to them and move on all right severe politics and drama is not good in any case but I have seen dialysis technicians new ones quit and experienced ones but really new ones quit because of it I even wanted to quit because of it this toxic situation was spilling over into the patients and it was not good. Once patients get involved in the drama you are having with another teammate or staff, you can forget it. Some patients spread that little gossip to other patients in the waiting room. And the whole situation blows up into something unpleasant by the time it gets back to the person who it is about. Now, I know that sentence sounds kind of off. So let me tell you an example. Um, so you're a new tech and let's just say, you know, there's another tech that's kind of skeptical about you that doesn't really like you um, or thinks that you're trying to take attention away from someone else that another tech that they always talk to or whatever, you know, some stupid this is just a stupid, you know, situation, but it happens. I've seen it happen. I'm going by what I've seen, okay? Um, so that tech is like, mm, that other tech I used to talk to is spending too much time with that newbie. So that tech will say to their patient that, hey, that tech over there, she's not a good tech. She's not a good tech or he's not a good tech because I think they move too slow and plus don't let them touch your arm because they might blow it up you know some stupid lie or some stupid little gossip and so what will happen is not all patients but depending on the person one let me just say what I saw that I saw one particular person take that drama out 
outside and told all the patients what their tech told them about the new person. And so when the new person now is trying to put on a patient that they called in from outside, that patient is giving them all kinds of problems and saying, don't touch my arm, I don't want you, you know, I heard you this, I heard you that. So that's why I'm telling you guys, severe drama on the floor is a reason some techs quit because they can't take the politics that's going on. They heard, I heard that that kind of situation people can't take that and I know I couldn't I want to honestly I did want to quit so many times because of different toxic situations that's not the only one this is what I've learned and God has helped me to learn it talk to the person now, some people may say hey that's not good advice but I advise you to talk to whoever initiated the gossip about you talk to them off the floor talk to them off the floor it is not good to talk to a patient not talk to a patient but another staff um sorry I got something floating on my screen it's not good to have any negative conversations with another teammate in front of the patient I know that in my unit you can get written up, terminated, or even fired. I've been through it already. Some units are kind of easy on it, but trust me, I have been reprimanded for this very thing I'm telling you about. If you have a problem with the teammate, you need to take them off the floor. Or if that teammate come to you trying to talk all kinds of sm smack in front of a patient that you're putting on, monitoring, or taking off, you need to tell them such and such, I feel you, but I will have to talk to you later about this or we're going to have to take this off the floor because that's very unprofessional. So, yeah, do not get loud with another tech on the floor in front of the patient. Take it off the floor, all right? And like I said, talk to that person. If you hear, if someone said they heard it from their horse's mouth, and it's something pertaining to you like ask them who is the horse's mouth and if they do tell you because some people don't want to tell you but if they do tell you or you are skeptical or you think it's X Y and Z you need to have a conversation with that person one-on-one -on -one, away from the crowd alone alone because some people like to have a crowd and say things that they normally wouldn't say if you got them alone and ask them a few questions all right like I said try to strive for peace I don't mean to make this video so long but it's very important that you understand what I'm saying number six last this is the last one all right consistent unfairness regarding scheduling slash ratio of patients okay maybe let me just say with me I have been through instances where because I was new to a situation, I was a target for work overload. I was getting work assignments that I wasn't really supposed to be doing, but people were like, ah, oh, she's new. She don't even know that she ain't even supposed to be doing this. All right. People begin to manipulate me into handling their duties and trying to make me think that was my actual job. I was slyly given additional patients that were other technicians during third shift and didn't notice because I was naive. Only as I became familiar with scheduling and assignments was I able to understand who's who and who is not mine. You should never be a slave to anyone. Only follow your job description. Okay, some people will have you even, you know, doing other duties that you're not supposed to be doing. Um, if I see water by my patient's machine, I will mop it. I do not wait for, you know, the janitor because to me that's a safety hazard. But some other people may say, no, 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 you need to wait for the janitor. So it really varies, okay? <clears throat> Sometimes I step out of my job description for the benefit of the patient and the unit, okay? 
but it really varies. That is totally, it's kind of different from what I'm saying here. What I'm basically saying here is if you feel that you're being pressured into doing something you know that's not your job, you need to really speak up. Bottom line, for instance, and I have an example here. This article, this write-up is on my blog, but I'll discuss that after I finish um, this, um, this point. For instance, you have, for instance, a technician may have, um, every tech is supposed to have, let's just say, four patients each shift. First, second, and third shift. But third shift, around third shift, the patient's the patient ratio varies. So, you know, a technician could have four patients, another tech could have two, and another tech could have two. But it's still equally divided. You see what I'm saying? But in this case, newbie tech H has four patients first shift, four patients second shift, and she has four patients four patients, uh, what did I say, four or three? Right, four patients, third shift. But, but there's three other patient technicians on the floor, and guess how many patients they have? One patient each. Do you think that's fair? That's not fair. All those other techs have one patient each. It's supposed to be divided in a fair way. So that tech will complain to management and be like, I don't think, you know, this is fair. I don't think that, you know, me having three to four patients and everybody else having one patient um, is fair. And, you know, or they may talk to whoever's making the schedule about it and it's brushed under the rug. Oh, well, you know, I'm sorry you haven't, I'm sorry that, you know, you feel that way, but that's the way it is all I'm saying guys <coughs> you need to take the time to learn the schedule learn which patients you're supposed to have learn your duties learn what you're not supposed to do what you're supposed to do that way you're not taken advantage of okay and you're left feeling drained at the end of the day okay because of work overload all right um, and I have a brief reflection I remember a tech um, I admire her so much and she walked in with respect. You had to respect her. I'm telling you, she walked in with respect. And I just love the way she carried herself. You know, and 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 she would not do anything that like she let people know, hey, this isn't my part of my job description and I'm not going to do that such and such. And she didn't even care what anybody said. She let the person know she let people know in general hey you ain't gonna take advantage of me and guess what she's still there she still got her job you know and 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 she went through a few hurdles in the beginning but she was able to make it through because she spoke up and she let it be known hey you ain't taking advantage of me and she said in a nice way you know what I'm saying all I'm saying is don't let no one overload you speak up you know be nice about it but you need to speak up if you don't it's going to continue month in month out year in and year out all right so that concludes this video i'm sorry it's long all right this article is at dialysis technicians worldwide.blogspot.com and i hope it helped i really do if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, click on the contact button on my blog and let me know. Contact me. All right. If you have not joined my dialysis group, I put the link below this video. Do so. If you also are a tech and you have some advice to add to what I already said, let me know. All right. Have a blessed day.